In this video, I'm going to talk about quadratic equations. So what is a quadratic equation? Well, the simplest quadratic equation is y equals x squared. And we've got a plot of that function here, so we can see the line has this shape here. And if we add 1 to this, the curve that we get shifts up by 1. If we add 2, it shifts everything up by 2. If we subtract 1, it shifts it all down by 1. Subtract 2. So I think uh, you get the idea of adding and subtracting a number just shifts the, the whole line up and down. So what about if we add x to this? So if we have y equals x squared plus x, um, the graph, the, the line on the graph gets shifted down and to the left a bit. x squared plus 2x gets shifted down further and shifted across the left further. x squared plus 3x even further. So by adding x, we shift that line to the left and down. If we subtract x, then the, the curve that we've got for our quadratic equation gets shifted to the right and down. And if we take away 2x, 3x, it continues to be shifted down and to the right. Okay. Um, we could also have the situation where we have a value of x, but also add something else on, and again that just shifts the whole thing up. So if we take this example, y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3x, here's the graph, and we're going to have a look at this in a bit more detail and think about what we can find out about this function by looking at the graph. So the first thing that we're going to think about is what is the value of x when y equals 0? So we can see this from the graph, x equals minus 3 and x equals 1 when y equals 0. And these points on the graph are referred to as the roots of the equation. So for this particular quadratic, x equals minus 3 and x equals 1. They're the two roots for this equation. OK, so if we put in that value, x equals minus 3, and put it into that equation, we calculate this out, indeed we can see that y equals 0. And then if we put x equals 1 into there, again we can see that y equals 0 by putting that value in. So that just confirms that they really are the roots for this equation. Okay, so another thing that we can do is we can write this equation in a different form. So in terms of the terminology, this is the factorized form and this is the expanded form. Now these two equations are equivalent to each other and I'm going to show you um, I'm going to show that to you now. So if we are to if we were to expand out the brackets here so if we multiply x by x and 3 times minus 1 we'll get minus 3 and then if we do x times minus 1 x times 3 simplify down we're back to that quadratic equation so it can be useful to put this in the factorized form or we might want it in the expanded form depending on what we want to do with our, our quadratic equation so just back to this for a moment then if we look at this factorized form we can also use this to work out what the roots will be. Um, so if we have a quadratic equation in the factorized form, um, if we have a value of x which is the opposite to the value that's in the bracket with it, so what I mean by that is if we have minus 3 plus 3, that will give 0 overall here. So that is another root of the, that's another way of finding the root of the equation. Because any value here, if that's 0 multiplied by this, the whole thing will be 0. And the same here, if the value of x here is the opposite to this one, so if it's plus 1, then 1 minus 1 will be 0, multiplied by this will give 0. So the factorised form is another way of finding the roots. And again we can put the values in and see that y equals 0 when we do it from in this factorised form. OK, so in terms of finding roots, we can plot the equation on a graph and have a look like we did earlier on or we can factorize the quadratic equation and then we can say um, well x just needs to be opposite to this to give this overall bracket to be zero so you know minus three plus one the final thing we can do is we can use the quadratic formula which is shown here so we just need to have a look at this for a bit and just explain what this is so if we put our quadratic in this form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero we can then put these values into this equation and it will tell us the two roots of the equation. You'll notice that there's a plus and minus symbol, so we have to evaluate this 
for a plus version and then for a minus version. So let's look at the example x squared plus 8x plus 15 equals 0. From this we can see that a equals 1, b equals 8 and c equals 15. So putting this into the equation gives minus 3 and it also gives minus 5. So we have to do a plus version of this quadratic formula and a minus version. And that will give us the two roots for that particular quadratic. OK, then just back to factorising for a moment. If we take this example, what we need to do is put it into this form, x plus n times x plus m. And we need to find two numbers that add up to 12, i.e. n plus m equals 12, and that also the two numbers that give you 35 when you multiply them together. So n times m equals 35. And in this case, the two numbers that would do this would be 5 and 7. So this is just a neat way of thinking about this uh, and, and a way of thinking about how to factorise. To put it in more generic terms, we need to find two numbers that add up to b and we need to find two numbers that when you multiply them give you c. OK, so there's a couple of examples here that you can have a look at and a think about. Um, so that's been a video about quadratic equations.